Welcome Diecast fans, I'm Tom Spanners Watson and I'm Frank DeGuru Gibbs and welcome to the final round of Brit vs Built. Congratulations to the Warner Beast who last week wrapped up the Brit 6-4. It was a great effort and I'm hoping to see the same out of the outlaws or better tonight. And thankfully after the Mr. Reds were taken down by that blue web virus, it seems that people are starting to return to the city. There's definitely no big crowds there yet but they are slowly coming back in. In our first outlaw match tonight we've got High Roller driven by Charles Huntington the third, he is going up against Phoenix's Revenge, driven by Tuco. Now the Outlaws tonight are going up against race-specific vehicles, High Roller being the only one that is a complete custom, and I can't believe how well that thing's going. I know what you mean, I was fully expecting that thing to tip over in the first corner, but he is just running away from Tuco, that is ridiculous! I mean, those rollers do have a 7 litre V8, and he did crack out a 13.851 time there, but that is not a good start for the Outlaws. Let's hope Vincent Van Gogh can do better. So we've got Head Start going up against the Sierra Cosworth, driven by Barry Sinjin Smythe. Isn't it supposed to be St. John? Well, I mean, you'd think so, but apparently it's Sinjin. Didn't they invent the language, and now they can't even speak it? And the Cosworth gets spun around a bogan alley, and around goes Head Start. Vincent Van Gogh with a beautiful move there, Keeps it nice and clean and looks like he is opening up a big gap and will not be challenged by Barry Sinjin Smythe. Old Bazzy here takes the wrong line to Bogan Alley, gets the spinny spins, but Vincent, the professional that he is, keeps it nice and clean, drives around him with no mistakes, takes the win and thankfully evens up the score. One to the Brits, one to the built cars. Now we've got another Ford Sierra Cosworth here. This one driven by Jonathan Holdsworth going up against Purple Haze driven by Boxer. We just saw in that last race how quick these Sierras are and if Boxer is not carefully could be left behind. Well, it looks like Jonathan Holdsworth out to a big lead already as they head into Boganelli. Boxer, no answer so far, but Jonathan gets it wrong in the second dog league and Boxer finds the gap, gets around him. Can he hold on to the finish? That's Sierra chasing him down in reverse. Boxer bouncing around the track, but he will take the win. No doubt old Jono there was super quick, but he just cut the corner, that clipped his nose and allowed Boxer to catch up. Look at that, what a perfect overtake by Boxer. And of course, he's not afraid to scratch up his paint on the way through. So Boxer doing an excellent job there, takes the win from the outside lane and makes the scores 2-1. to one. I won't let anyone eat my chocolate starfish donut because I don't want to share. It's okay to be selfish when you're eating a chocolate starfish donut from Buster's Donuts because they're so delicious. Have you busted one today? Now it's time for the classic Ford Escort Rally, driven by Kendall Mintcake, to go up against Moose Knuckle, driven by Crazy Canuck. Now whilst the Crazy Canuck is crazy, these rally drivers can be a whole other level of crazy. And on top of that, they drive ridiculously fast, right? Well, old Minty Fish, they're definitely quick. Look at that. The crazy Canuck's going to need an absolute miracle if he wants to win. And talk about a miracle. Kendall goes down. Crazy Canuck gives him the bash on the way past and will take the win. Oh, that's very unlucky for Mint Slice there. Comes in way too hot into Big Kahuna Corner and pays the price. And then in true Canuck style, Moose Knuckle gives him the bash on the way past. So after four races, is the Brits seem to be in big trouble here. They've got a lot of work if they want to turn this around. Next up, we've got Neil Pye driving the Jaguar Mark 1 going up against Andy Moon driving Eclipse. Now, I'm not sure that Neil Pye's got much of a chance here because I understand he's a vegan. What are you on about, Frank? And what has that got to do with racing at all? Well, it's got nothing to do with racing, mate. It's just he was wandering through the pits going on about vegetable rights and peace. I just presumed he was a vegan. Well, vegan or not, he seems to have left Andy Moon in his dust. Well, the Outlaws could still get lucky. Look, he's slowing down. Here comes Andy. Andy tried to go up the inside, but he spun out. And that is unfortunate for him as he hands the win to Neil Pye. It really all went wrong in the first corner there when Andy caught his rear end on the front of the Jag and that allowed the Jag to slip on by him but then I really thought he was going to have him here in Big Kahuna Corner he came down looked like he was doing everything he could to get up the inside but unfortunately I think he hit the gas pedal a little bit too hard and a bit too early that spun him out handed the win to Neil so the Brits starting to claw back 2-3 to three now as it's the MGBGT of Christopher Ryan going up against Stinger driven by Iron Poet now funny I didn't realise this guy's name was Chris I thought his name was Mike because that's what he everyone in his team was calling him. Really? That seems odd. Yeah, they keep calling him Mike the Cool Person for some reason. Well, cool or not, Iron Poet doing the business out there at the moment. He gets sideways coming out of petrol head corner. They collide briefly, but Iron Poet manages to get the car into reverse and it looks like he's going to hold on for the win. Stinger was pretty lucky here. He goes into petrol head corner fairly hot, puts the gas down way too early, gets himself spun around. 
But luckily for him, he got a bit of assistance and managed to hold on, so the outlaw is still holding on to the lead 4 to 2. Who's up next, Frank? Well, we've got a classic Ford Anglia driven by Adrian Charles Edmonton, and he's going up against Nitro Poutine driving the Beaver Mobile. So the Anglia is another car that we haven't really seen on this track before. I wonder how it's going to do, especially against the Beaver. Well, Chaz seems to put the hammer down, mate. He's giving it the beans to stay in front of the Beaver there. Adrian drifts across, clips the sidewall. Beaver Mobile slams into him, gets him going again, and it looks like the Beaver Mobile may have stalled out. Adrian there getting the spinny spins in the final straight, but he takes a nice clean win overall. But if we just nip back and have another look at this, you see him slide sideways. The Beaver Mobile taps him in the rear end. That gets him pointed in the right direction again, and he ends up taking the win. And that means it's three to the Brits and four to the Outlaws. Well, here's a matchup I didn't think we'd see. A Ford Transit flatbed driven by Errol Flintlock going up against Munted driven by Hall then Song. Don't be fooled, mate. Those Ford Transits were used by criminals in the 80s and 90s because they were super quick. Although it looks like that one may have been a bit knackered. Yeah, I think you're right, mate. Munted just walking away with this one. Hawthorn sung so confident he's turned the truck around and is backing down the track. Oh mate, Errol's done like a dog's dinner now. I'm not even sure if he's going to cross the finish line. Oh no, here he comes. He seems to have found his gears again and is moving fairly quickly in reverse but just way too far behind. That was easy peasy lemon squeezy for Munted there and the Outlaws maintain a two race lead. Well this should be interesting, we've got the Ford Capri driven by Michael St. Michael going up against Trigger driven by Cam. Cam of course holds the track record at a sub 13 and no one has come close to him yet. But to be fair he has had some steering issues in the last couple of races that may be slowing him down. Crikey Mikey that Capri is quick. It certainly is, he gets up on the side one and looks like Cam may have gone right over there. There's nowhere in sight and the Bonnet of that Capri bouncing around too. Cam definitely got flipped over there. Look at that, he's still got the throttle pinned, but unfortunately that's him done. And that brings the scores much closer as well. Four now to the Brits, five to the Outlaws. Last race, it's the Rover P6 driven by Elsie Ramsbottom going up against the current top of the list, Landshark driven by Wally Champ. Well, it's do or die time because if that Rover takes the win, that's going to tie up the series. That is not good. Landshark needs to take this win for the Outlaws, but he gets spun around going through Bogan Alley. He manages to get it into reverse, but it looks like Elsie's making a charge. Landshark finding some power in reverse somehow and manages to open up that gap and take that final win, thankfully. And unfortunately for Sheep's butt, she's going to come in last. Well, it was almost a bit touch and go there going to that first corner. Elsie pushed very hard against Landshark, but luckily Wally Champ managed to keep the car together and takes the win. And that means overall the Brits score four, the Outlaws six. So just like the wannabes, the Outlaws do the business overall and take out the series. And that makes it a clean sweep for the built cars, proving they are the best on the road. Although to be fair, there were some great performers for the Brits. I'd love to see that Capri race again and even High Roller. He was quite impressive. Oh, no doubt. Even though it was a clean sweep, I don't think it was easy by any means. There were some tough competitors there overall, but you just can't beat a built car. Oh, totally, mate. Especially when it's built American muscle. Well, make sure you tune in next time because it's time to decide who who will be moving on at the end of the season of the Outlaws? Oh yeah, it's all or nothing, everything on the line at the last minute. But that's enough from us tonight. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Tom Spanners Watson. He's Frank. It appears that the recent MCP deployment of the blue web virus on the mega robotics enforcement droids has had even more unexpected consequences. There have been reports of computer systems malfunctioning all over Echo City, causing everything from traffic lights to go out of phase to small appliances exploding. MCP CEO Rick Johansson says they have a new AI called 10X that will be deployed to take control and remove all traces of the blue web virus. Experts are saying this is dangerous, especially given the original virus spread more widely than MCP had originally planned. 